big win. Uh, some people might be wondering if you guys might have a letdown at all this week. Have you seen any signs of that from your group? I think we're just keeping the main thing the main thing. Um, take a practice series day at a time. I feel like we had an intense practice today on Tuesday. It was real physical, so I think we're making the right steps. They were in a lot of RPOs. What what challenge does that put on the defense, and especially you at a, at corner? Does that do anything for you, or is that more for the front seven guys? Um, yeah, just make sure that your eyes are right in coverage. You don't want to think you're um, reading a run, and then they might pull it and still end up on the ball. So you just got to be a little bit more disciplined in coverage and where your eyes are. You made a couple plays at the line of scrimmage, four tackles for loss. Is that something you kind of envisioned was going to be in the game plan defensively for you guys at corner? Yeah, I knew this game, um, last game, we was going to have to show up and run a lot just because uh, Utah was a top five team um, running the ball. So it was just something that um, we prided ourselves in that um, upcoming week. And it's always something that we are capable of. It's just a matter of when we have to really show up. When just that game and you've had you know, interceptions and pass coverage, you've had sacks, some things that you just didn't have necessarily a chance to show at Alabama. What, what is it about how you're playing right now or about the positions you're being put in in this defense that's allowing you to do all this? Uh, it's really just opportunity, honestly. Um, it's not really a shot or anything. It's just just my coaches, um, Coach Landon and Coach Tosh and Coach Meat, just put me in the right position to make plays and just execute. That's all that really came down to. So what's more satisfying for you, a sack or a pass breakup? Probably a pass breakup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your journey, Kyrie, because reading back to high school and stuff, like you signed with Arizona Western. Did you actually end up going there or did you go to Fort Scott directly or what happened in 2018? Yeah, I went there for like two weeks, but then I really thought I was about to stop playing football. I didn't, I was like 17 at the time and I was scared being that far. So I came back home, sat around, watched some of my friends play big time ball. Two of my close friends were like four and five star recruits that I decided I was going to give it another chance. And everything done worked out ever since I did that. So what, so what happened in the fall of 18 then? Like, I ended up going to Fort Scott. Then once I went to Fort Scott, I uh, racked up some offers, probably like 12 or 13. Then after that season, I ended up transferring, but then it became COVID. But I played in the spring. That's when my 12 to 13 offers went to like 35. Then I committed to Alabama, and then I went there in the springtime of like 2019, 2020. I don't really remember, honestly. It's been a little minute. During that period where you thought you might not play football anymore, what, what did you think was going to be next for you? Like, what, what was your future holding for you? Honestly, I was in the gaming. I thought I was going to be like a 2K league player or something like that. That's what I do in my free time. So I really didn't see much of football in the future. At that moment, I was really locking in on um, playing the game. And then a coach um, emailed me saying, do I want to play again? And I decided I did. Tell me about the friends you had, was Jabari one of them? When you were saying Jabari Laws, you're saying you get the, your friends who were playing big time ball. That, nah, oh, okay. that wasn't one I was referring to. I got it. <laughs> How do you go? see from Cal's offense when you look at tape? Uh, they got a good running back, number one. Um, Jaden Ott, I believe his name is. Big, strong guy. They got good, uh, capable receivers. Um, they have a good team. You know, we just got to lock in and trust coaches on the keys that they're giving us. And I feel like if we do that, and we should be able to execute at a high level. We saw some clips on Twitter after the game, after the Utah win. Just what, was, what were the emotions like in the locker room after that win? Yeah, it was just a fun um, atmosphere in the locker room. Um, we felt like our coaches were harping on us big time about us stopping and running stuff like that. We felt like we lived up to it. So we were just excited to celebrate a little bit in the locker room. That's all that was. Going back to your journey, you, you said you initially had like 12 or 13 offers, and then after that, that spring, it shot up to like 20 or 30. What what changed? To, I don't know. Honestly, I mean, I think the coaches, I'm, I wouldn't end up going to East Mississippi, so it was a little bit more exposure. And, um, you know, the whole last chance shoot thing, I was able to get, um, able to be seen more, really. I think that's the, the thing I could point out the most, I would say. What was it like question? going from that then to like being at Alabama, where like at the time it's like that's the biggest school in the country, and I mean that that had to have been quite the juxtaposition from thinking that you weren't going to keep playing football. Yeah, it's a lot of things that I had to like learn and grow from coming from the junior college thing, and 
I think that might be some of the reason why everything didn't work out. You know, some things I had to mature on and learn about, you feel me, as coming from a junior college player to being at now uh, one of the top universities. So it was a learning stepping stone. And, you know, me being here at Oregon has helped and it's, I wouldn't trade it for nothing.